Well, hello everyone. This is Jeff Loves Jets with another unboxing video today. We're going to open up this Gemini 200 Qantas 747 400. Been uh, looking forward to getting this one out of the box. I've had it for a few weeks and uh, just now getting ready to take her out. So we can take a look at the box and we have a little bit of an interesting box this time from Gemini uh, with the Goodbye Boeing 747 1971 to 2020, which is the years that uh, Qantas have been operating the Boeing 747. And this uh, model is uh, item number G2QFA734. And this was purchased from Collectible Jets in Massachusetts, which is where I buy a lot of my models from. And let's take a look at the side here. It's better than the usual, just all black box that the Gemini, uh, Gemini Jets uses. The official product of Qantas. So pretty slick. And this is a recent release, so it hasn't been out that long. And seeing that all of these 747s are being retired by most of the airlines, it, uh, I've been trying to pick up as many as I can now that they're kind of going to be not so easy to find. So I recently got a 747-400 from Virgin and I unboxed that recently. So here we have our metal stand. No plate, but uh, one day these guys will get it figured out that it's a really nice addition to have that. Got our protective layer of plastic here. And then we have our gear, which I will, I always display mine with the gear uh, in the uh, um, landing or sort of in the taxi configuration. Now this is not a flaps down model, so we just have the one set of nose gear, but we'll put those on here a little bit. Then we also have the covers if you want to have the appearance with the gear up, which is kind of cool. So let's take her out here. Very nice. Just uh, the Qantas livery is so striking. I've uh, flown uh, the Qantas A380 to, flown on the Qantas A380 from Dallas to Sydney and also from Sydney to Perth. And, uh, and it's a pretty impressive looking livery, especially in that size of an aircraft or the size of 747. So let's take a look here. The iconic hump of the 747-400, or actually all the 747s, but the extended upper deck. And on this aircraft, the upper deck is all business class. So we have our radome cover here in the front of the aircraft. Our cockpit windows and wipers. The crew escape hatch. Hervey Bay is the name of the aircraft. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about Hervey Bay and where it's located. And then all the 747s all have Long Reach. Uh, Long Reach was a location where the airline was originally based. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on that as well. So we have our pitot tubes and static ports on the left side of the aircraft. We have the L1 door and its mechanism. Qantas, of course, a founding mem one of the founding members of One World. So we have the One World logo there next to the L1 door. That beautiful Qantas bold billboard title there. Qantas stands for Queensland and Northern Territories Air Services. And the Spirit of Australia is always adorned each of the Qantas Airlines. 
You have the Errol Tudor as well as the One World logo there as well. We have additional static ports here on the side of the fuselage. Such an iconic aircraft. Joe Sutter and his team really just made an amazing feat of engineering when they built this aircraft. Sadly, we're seeing all of these 400s be retired. Still some 800s out there. Uh, Lufthansa, I've flown on Lufthansa's 747-8 Intercontinental a few times. Um, and it's even more impressive than the 400. We have the L3 door over the wing exit. Now, the, there's no exit walkway on the 747 because the raft, when it comes out, or the slide, when it comes out, actually extends down and over the wing so the passengers exit in this area. Then we have the seven, Boeing 747-400 insignia or notification on the side. The L4 door and its mechanism. Really nice detail on the paint work there to designate all of the, the latches and such, really cool. And I got a new camera now so I can really get a nice, good close-up zoom on that. And we have the flag carrier of Australia, of course, so the Australian flag. Victor Hotel, Oscar Echo Hotel is the registration on this aircraft, which we all see the partial registration on the tip of the tail there, Oscar Echo Hotel. That beautiful full-size tail with the livery on it. The flying kangaroo, which incidentally came about from this aircraft or Qantas flying the kangaroo route, which was the route from Sydney to London Heathrow, which was operated partly by BOAC as well. Beautiful empennage there. Paintwork looks really good. You see our tail illumination lights there. The elevators. The rudder's got a nice detail with the grooving there so you can see the rudder and the rudder trim tab. We have the APU on the tail and the strobe light or APU exhaust, I should say. And the APU is, is used to run the aircraft when the engines are turned off. And on the underside of the fuselage, we see the doors, the access doors for the APU housing. And you get a nice shot of the underside of those horizontal stabilizers. These two boxes here, these are the pressure release valves. So they can control the cabin pressure as the aircraft moves between different altitudes. And then this little feature here is actually a drain cock. Uh, this is to drain uh, water or whatever out of the galley, which is located right above. And uh, this is basically extending out so that the fluid can disappear into the airstream that's underneath it instead of spraying back all over the other side of your aircraft. And then uh, to the left of the tail here, we see some more static ports because we have to imagine that there's a bulk pressure bulkhead in the tail of the aircraft, which allows the aircraft to be pressurized. Very nice. Let's have a look, continue on the underside of the aircraft here. We have a VHF antenna here, which has got the nice spiral paint job on it. So you can see it very clearly. the Gemini Jets logo. These are the openings where the gear will go, the body gear. We have the hole for the stand and then these are just painted on the appearance of the doors. They're not 3D, they're not grooved. And then these are the vents for the AC packs which are all located kind of underneath this in the floor of the fuselage here. 
We have the anti-collision beacon. These are the knock ducts, the intakes for the AC system, and they allow air to be taken in um, without uh, the high speed air flowing across the aircraft. This allows there to be a low speed air supply. Then we have another drain cock here. So imagine you've got condensation from your AC packs. We have the hole for the front nose gear and the nose gear doors. And then let's have a look at the wings here. We got our full registration there, very nice. We can see the flap track fairings here, the flapper on, our triple slotted flaps here on the 747-400. And this is a 747-438 ER. So 38 is the airline code for Qantas, for Boeing. Then we can see the underside of the slats here, the Krieger slats, which come out from the bottom of the wing and roll into the airstream. And the slats and flaps are designed to increase uh, lift during low speeds, such as takeoff and landing. Oh, we got a little bit of a cow issue here, if you can see that. Looks like the uh, the nose of the cowling is kind of popped off. But I want to break it something, so I might have to tap that with a little something rubber so I don't break it. But the engines look very really nice. We have the other wing, the starboard wing. And here we see the fuel dump nozzle here. And then this is the little triangle there. It's a drain. Uh, this allows condensation uh, and, and also to vent fuel vapor during takeoff and at other times during flight. And also as an air inlet. So as fuel is burnt, the wing tanks can take in fuel as well. And then we have our Wing tip device here, the winglet. This is surprisingly much larger than it appears out of the window of an aircraft. I think in this case it's about eight feet. We see our flying kangaroo on each side of the engines. And our GE insignia. These are G GE engines, of course look really nice and that bright red is just so striking I'm on the flight path between LA and New York so I would track the Qantas used to fly uh, 747 from Brisbane into LAX and then they would fly that 747 as the continuation of the Sydney to LAX flight to New York. So I'd have one of these come over the house every day, right about, right about one o'clock, 1.30, uh, the 747 would come by. They've changed that now as the Dreamliner is running that route. So let's look at the starboard side here. We have our Long Reach again, our Harvey Bay, our R2 door, as well as our cargo loading door for the front hold static ports. And then we have the access to the upper deck. There's a door on both sides so that uh, premium passengers can exit and enter via their own jet pack, jetway. There's the R2 door. And we the lights on the wings, uh, the landing gear lights on the wings are not jewels, they're just painted on. Our three door. Such a beautiful aircraft and just the size of it is just, it's so impressive and so, so beautiful to look at. So then we have our aft hold access door as well as the 
hold number five, the registration, Victor Hotel, Oscar Echo Hotel, and the Aussie flag, and the rear door, R5, pressure release valve. And then on the upper surface of the aircraft, we have numerous uh, VHF antennas. This is our satellite box here. And then we have two auto direction finder antennas here. There's a knot in 3D. Then we have another VHF. Oh, got a little, oh, it's a little bit of fuzz. And there would also be collision, uh, traffic collision avoidance system antennas, air traffic control antennas on the forward portion of the aircraft here. And then we have our anti-collision beacon. Quite stunning. So this is Gemini Jets 1200, as I mentioned, Gemini 2, G, G2 QFA 734 from Collectible Jets. A serial number of this aircraft, 32912. Line number is 1321, 747438ER. First flight of this aircraft, January 16th of 2003, delivered February 9th of 2003. This aircraft went into storage in Sydney in March 27th, 2020, right after COVID kind of got started. And then its last flight was from LAX to Mojave on May 20th, 2020. And uh, that flight was QF6001. This runs engines four times the GE CF680 C2BF5s. And those put out 61,690 pound feet of thrust. Seating configuration we have on this aircraft business is the upper deck, as I mentioned, and the rows one through row eight so down here in the nose of the aircraft and that's forward to the uh l1 door then premium is the l2 door to two rows in front of l3 so in this area here then uh we have um rows 34 to 39 is a premium economy so that's a 242 configuration and that's in this region of the aircraft here and then we have economy from rows 43 to row 75, which is the entire tail end of the aircraft here. Uh, 10 across in that seating, so three, four, and three. Um, so 270 economy seats, 36 premium economy, and 58 business. And this was the new rear livery from 2007. Length of this aircraft, 230 feet, two, 231 feet, 10 inches. Wingspan, 211 feet, five inches. Height, 63 feet, 8 inches at the tail. Maximum takeoff weight, 910,000 pounds. Wow, that's a lot. Maximum fuel weight on this aircraft, 424,912 pounds. That is over 200 tons, almost. Uh, and that is a total of 6, 63,705 gallons. Essentially, it costs about $250,000 to fill up this aircraft with fuel. Engine maximum thrust is 61,000, as I mentioned. Fan diameter is 93 inches. So Qantas was the flag carrier of Australia. It's the world's third, third largest airline in operation, third oldest, excuse me. It was founded in November 16, 1920 in Winton, Queensland by Hudson Fish, Paul McGuinness, and Fergus McMaster. They moved their headquarters to Longreach, Queensland in 1921, and then to Brisbane in 1930, which is where their current headquarters is at. International service began in May of 1935. Uh, Queensland and Northern Territory Aerial Services was what Qantas stands for. Founding member of One World Alliance, along with British Airways, of course, and American Airlines. Based in Sydney with hubs in Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne. And uh, the Kangaroo logo first used on the Kangaroo route. And uh, the first uh, 747 was first used by Qantas in August 1971. And they retired their last 747 in July 2020 as a result of covid pandemic so transitioning to the lighter and more efficient jets that uh, are currently available the twins the twin aisle twin engines are going to be the way of the future as far as i can tell so harvey bay was a small city approximately 180 miles north of the queensland state capital of brisbane overlooking a bay of the same name on the east coast of australia 
James Cook was the first European to discover the bay and named it after Royal Naval, Naval Officer Augustus John Hervey. So that's why it's called Hervey Bay. So now we should take out these gears and put those in. And nothing really spectacular with the gear there. We don't have any strobes or uh, jewel lights in there, which I think my uh, Virgin model did. So I would expect this one would have it too, but no. And then we have the partial registration, EH. And the shock on the, oh wait, we do have it backwards, there we go. There we go, there's the jewel lights. And now we turn the shock forward. There we go, that's how it's supposed to be. So we do have the jewel lights and we've got the shock absorber pointed forward. This is one of the few aircraft that has the shock absorber pointing forward. And then we've got our wing gear here. We've got our body gear here. Slip those into place. And then there we go. Very nice. And let's get these get tilted nicely for our landing configuration. Of course, the 747 has that gear all the way tilted up in preparation for landing. So the model does sit a little nose high here. It's kind of wanting to come up off the nose gear a little bit, but sits nice. And the gear is metal, so it's going to last a long time. Let's check out the stand. There we go. Nice. This looks really good. Beautiful model. There's a nice stance on the stand, which I always like to see. I want to make sure it sits nice and straight. Looks great. So if you have this model, let me know what you think of it. It's another stunning addition to the collection. I'm at about 50 of these uh, wide body 1200 die cast models now. Um, collecting in flight our aviation re aviation retail direct Gemini jets JC wings is pretty much the majority of my compilate uh, collection I've got a couple of uh, Phoenix models as well but I pretty much stick to the former three models if I possibly can because I just like the way the models look and the qual quality of them so yeah another fantastic addition to the collection if you have not subscribed please do that and follow me and like my channel as, or like this video if you enjoyed watching this Help me uh, support my channel and help me make it grow. That'd be great. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Love to hear your comments below.